Welcome to another edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. You might be wondering why I'm in my t-shirt as opposed to looking fancy like a financial advisor is supposed to. Well, look at this. Got to move my mic there. Got my brand spanking new Heritage Wealth Planning t-shirts available. And they're in that uh, Under Armour stuff. Or the sweat, I don't know what it's called. The moisture repellent, I guess. I love it. It fits real well, real comfortable. If you want one, let me know. We might be able to do that for you. So... All right, well, today I want to talk about something that just ticks me off more. I, I tell you, the level of absurdity with our tax system is mind boggling because the uh, the way that they tax, the raised revenue, um, stealth is the word I was looking for, the stealth taxation that they that they do, these guys, and they've done it bipartisan, doesn't matter who it is. I'm just going to share with you how Medicare recipients um, widows, and I just focus on widows because they're, I'm just going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. How they're going to just, you got to understand how that works when it comes to your Medicare Part B and Part D premiums. I've talked about this a million times on Sunday. I'm going to talk about it again here today. I apologize. I'm going to hammer it. I'm going to hammer it. I'm going to hammer it. If you have IRAs, if you have IRAs, if you have IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, all that, and you're married filing jointly, and you're not taking advantage of your two standard deductions and your higher, higher tax bracket thresholds, you are leaving your surviving spouse, most likely your wife, in a tax trap of unseen proportions. And no one talks about it for the love of me. I don't understand why. Ignorance, I guess. Uh, but they all, and I, I'll, they all just look at it like in today. They look at us today. Well, today my taxes are low. Yeah. Guess what's going to happen when you die and you leave all this to your spouse? And you don't have to be... A multi-multi-millionaire, my friends, you don't have to have that much money today to hammer your surviving spouse with tax consequences. You just don't. So let me uh, reduce myself here. All right, so here's the Kaiser uh, Foundation. Uh, yeah, Kaiser Family Foundation. Medicare is income-related premiums under current law and proposed changes. I just want to point this out to you. All right, so watch this. Here's a lady... If she makes less than $85,000 in modified adjusted gross income, MAGI, so that's before standard deductions or any itemizes that, itemizations that she takes, modified adjusted gross income. And by the way, that also includes tax exempt interest. If her MAGI is, above, is below $85,000, she's responsible for 25% of her Part B premiums as well as the Part D as well. So she's going to pay these two numbers right here. What's that? 160, 170, 170. The minute she goes above $85,000, $85,001, she's responsible for 35%. The minute she goes above 107, she's responsible for 50%. And see the difference, a complete doubling of the amount. She was paying 170, now she's paying 340. If she goes above 160, and I'm not even focused on this so much, I'm focused on right here. Because it's such a small, small, narrow threshold to go from 85, 79999 to 108 or 107000 a dollar to have your premiums double. All right, so how do we get this? Why do I focus on this so much? Because just like everything else, when it comes to Social Security and Medicare, these numbers were not threshold. They were not indexed for inflation. Now that is because of ACA, the Affordable Care Act that Obama signed. And I don't like the ACA, and neither should you. The idea that we're going to, you know, ruin healthcare for the vast majority of people to help the people who truly need it is boggles the mind. When we could have easily just financed those people who need it and leave everybody else alone to get their doctors to have their premiums reduced, it does make me mad because it's completely. It's, it's the system's completely broken. And the more level of government ineptitude they add on it, the more it gets broken even further. So the Affordable Care Act, what it did is it did not allow these income levels to be indexed for inflation. They had a 10 year sunset period like they all do, which is going to expire theoretically in 2020. It remains to be seen if that happens. Um, when they passed the bipartisan budget just the other about two months ago, uh, they did not change the or they're going to allow this to be back to index for inflation. Thank goodness, as it was originally when Bush signed it. Uh, so we're going to get rid of that threshold. But again, it's going to be index inflation starting in this year. It wasn't index or inflation for the previous 10. So basically, you've had 10 years of accumulating assets based on 2003 law 
which means you're essentially you're paying taxes on your assets today for a law that was passed in 2003 that initially was indexed for inflation. But then under the ACA, they, they stopped that. They did not index it for inflation. That's still tax on middle class people. No other way around that. And again, I talked about Social Security. Reagan did the same thing as Social Security as did Clinton. So it's bipartisan. No other way around that. But the ACA is a big thorn in my side here today because they, they deliberately did not index the thresholds for inflation. So you have a widow who's 80, making $85,001 and modified adjusted gross income. And she's making $85,001 in 2008, I guess, or nine is when it went into law. Uh, the ACA went into law in 2009, 10, 2010. That's right. 2010, the ACA went into law. So she's making 85000 in 2010. She's making 85000 in 2020. She is subject to a significant increase on her Medicare, Part B and Part D. Yet the ACA is supposed to help people uh, who, are not, who are in need. And yet you're going to tell me a widow who lives in New Jersey who has to take mass amount of required distributions to pay her property taxes on top of the income taxes that she pays. Why should she pay the penalty? For everybody else who doesn't have health insurance, that's not fair. Absolutely. And I'm not saying the tax goes fair, but what the Republicans did, and as much as the Republicans are supposed to be against the rich, now if you break a certain threshold over here, you're going to be paying 100% of your Medicare Part B. 100%. Obama didn't do that. The Republicans did. Like it or rightly or wrongly, that's just what they've done. So they've actually made this threshold index for inflation. And they made this, if you're making that kind of scratch, you're going to be paying 100% of your Medicare Part B and Part D. But until then, because of the ACA, we're still stuck at $85,000 for a widow. Now, just think about this. So a widow has, let's just say, $500,000. She inherits an IRA, and she just takes minimum distributions out. Now she's 80 years old, and she's got $500,000 in that, $500,000. Divided by 12, she's going to have to take $41,000 out of that IRA for mandatory distribution. The MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income, is going to include everything. It's going to include half her Social Security. It's going to include her RMDs. Any other, if she has a pension, any other income she has is going to include capital gains that she makes on investments, all that stuff. It doesn't take much to get above the $85,000 threshold. It just does not. And I will tell you, I've had clients and I just look at New Jersey because the property taxes are so extraordinarily high there on top of the income tax too. $100,000 of income, all right, because of their modified adjust gross income, includes some of the Social Security, includes distributions from IRA, includes any capital gain interest or qualified dividends that she gets. And now she's got to pay $11,000 in Social Security or uh, property taxes to Governor Christie and whoever the new guy is now in New Jersey. Um, that's 11% of her overall income, her modified adjusted gross income, but because her MAGI is now above the $85,000, not only does she have to pay those high property taxes, not only does she have to pay the high income taxes, but she has to pay a, almost a double. In fact, this case is right about a doubling of her Medicare Part B and Part D because Obama did not index in the Democrats in 2010. They did not index this for inflation. <laughs> It's just absurd and drives me up the wall because it's it's bad policy. It it hurts people who've done their due diligence to save. They've saved money. They squat they squirreled money away in IRAs. They avoided consumption. They could have easily spent the IRAs while they were alive with their husbands, but they didn't because they're worried about running out of money. So what do they get hit with? They get hit with big health insurance costs. Yeah, but it's not the way they thought. They thought it was made for nursing homes and whatnot. It's with Medicare premiums, Part B and Part D. And it's just, it, it annoys me. And this is why if you are in the threshold of married filing jointly, and you now have the ability of the 12% tax bracket, you need to start taking advantage of the two standard deductions. I've said this, as I'm, I'll say it to I'm blue in the face. In the lower tax thresholds that you're in, it will allow your wife, your surviving spouse, your wife, and it could be a man, but generally speaking, it's not, to avoid that huge tax trap called the Medicare premium tax, and on top of that, the Social Security tax, and on top of that, the income tax as well. So now, think about my my uh, my lady who's up in New Jersey. Oh, could she sell her house? Uh, sure, but what if she doesn't want to? I mean, she's got to be forced to sell her house to avoid paying the New Jersey real estate tax, to avoid paying this kind of Medicare premium tax to avoid paying the social security your tax on social security. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just not right. There's no other way around that. And, and it needs to be addressed. And people don't address it because they're ignorant of it. 
Now, when she was married, if she would have started slowly moving money to Roth IRAs, yes, you're going to pay a little more tax today. I guarantee you, if you move money from a traditional deferred account to a Roth IRA, you will pay more tax today. The idea is, oh, can I pay more tax today solely on my income to avoid paying more tax tomorrow on Social Security, Medicare, Part B part and Part D, and on top of that income tax and on top of that higher tax bracket? The answer is yes, you should. Start taking advantage of the moving the money to your Roth IRA in order to get it out of the IRA so you don't get walloped when you're surviving spouse. It's just horrific. So I just, let's see if there's anything else this Kaiser thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, Met Bar B standard premium. So I'm just going to read it to you. Income really right here. People on Medicare with incomes above $85,000 for individuals. Now remember, it's not taxable income. So you could have $100,000 $100,000 of gross income, yeah, and that $12,000. You could have $97,000 of gross income. And No, well, shoot, you could have $86,000 of gross income. Forget that because it's before your standard deduction kicks in. So it's gross income is what it is. And if you have any tax-exempt interest, it just adds fuel to the fire. It's not taxable interest, my friend. It's taxable income, my friends, is gross income. It's what you have on the top line of your 1040. What is your income? All right, now you flip over to page two, subtract all these deductions, be it itemized mortgage and all that. It doesn't matter. You go back to uh, uh, page one of your 1040. What is that bottom line set of adjust gross income, the very bottom of adjust gross income, the 1040 line, I think it's line 37 maybe. And then you actually add your tax exempt interest that you have as well, if you have any. And that's what you're going to be paying your premiums on. They should have said that. You know, I mean, I'm not faulting them. They wrote the articles. Good. People on Medicare with incomes above, gross incomes, 85000 for individuals. That's all I'm talking about here because I'm worried about that widow who's going to be hit hard with a tax wall because of the politicians. They haven't indexed it for inflation. Um, are required to pay higher premiums for Medicare Part B and Part D. The Part B income-related premium was established by the Medicare Modernization Act, as George Bush George W. Bush in 2003, so I'm not just bashing Obama, but at least Bush indexed it for inflation. The Part D related premium was established by the Ford Carroll Act of 2000, uh, 2010, which went into effect 2011. Under these provisions, beneficiaries with the higher incomes pay a larger part of Part B and Part D than the 25%, ranging from 35% to 80%, and now it's going to be 100% because Republicans just said if you're making that kind of money, you're, you're paying the entirety of your premium. You're not going to get a subsidy from Medicare to pay your premium. You know, you may or may not like that. Don't care. It is what it is. I just care about that. Like right people right there, this threshold right there for single taxpayers. Beneficiary. Well, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Benefit 2007. The, yeah. Well, we already talked about that. Just the premiums, how much more they're going to be. Um, let's see here. So I got this from, uh, from Kiplinger. Let's talk about that. I thought this was pretty interesting as well. Nine things you must know about surcharges. Remember, folks, if we're talking a doubling of our Medicare, that's real money. We're talking thousands of dollars a year. So if you got 170 um, times 12, and that's just the one threshold. If I could get my calculated work times 12, that's $2,000 a year, 2,000 bucks. So if you're making 85%, just $85,000, and you divide that by two, yeah, that's three, almost 3% 3 of your total income right there, just going to your increase in Medicare premiums. That's just going to your increase. So you have 170 times two, one set, that's 340 divided by $85,000. That means 4% of your total income just going to your Medicare premiums. That's not I mean, all the other stuff that goes with it. So the minute you break 85,000 or 107, I think it was, yeah, 107 to get in the second highest you know, the base of where you double your premiums, the minute you break 107, 4% of your income, roughly three or 4% is going to your Medicare premiums. <laughs> hey. um, all right. Means testing. That's what it is. Means testing is a hot topic when it comes to government benefits, but it's not just academic debate. It's high income. And again, high income. Yeah. So that single lady uh, is making 85,000 and $1 high income already paying higher premiums. In reality, requiring wealthier to people to pay more can get a bit messy. And I just love how they say wealthier people. And I love it if you look at the Medicare website, 
They say only 5% of the people do pay that. Well, yeah, guess what? It's going to be more and more and more as we don't index it for inflation for sure. That's just a fact. So it might only be 5% this year. It's going to be 8%, 9%, 10% next year. And I will tell you right now, if you think that just because it's going to be indexed for inflation come the new Congress in 2000, I mean, come what they just passed with, the, with Trump in 2018, in 2020, the new, there could be a new Congress. In 2020, there could be a new president. Obama got through without indexing it for inflation with Democrats running the roost. It could easily happen again in 2020, where the higher income people, it only affects 10% of the population. All right. Well, again, those are the 10% who squirreled their money away, who avoided consuming so that way they could live a, a easier in retirement. And yet we're going to punish those people by not indexing their Medicare premium surcharge in the, on top of that Social Security. Remember, Social Security, if you're single, you pay tax on your Social Security if you have all of a just gross income of about $25,000. That's just, it's just crazy. Um, and that hasn't changed since 1983. All right. So I want to... Um, Let's see. Is there anything else I want to hear? We talked about the four. Yeah. How long is uh, Irma is what they called it? That's a Bush thing. The Part B surcharge is created by the Medicare Modernization Act 2003. Better known as uh, Part D prescription drug coverage went into effect in 2007. And the Affordable Care Act imposed a high income surcharge on Part D. So Bush did it on Part B. Obama did it on Part D. Uh, Bush did, it on, Bush did it on Part B. Obama did it on Part D. Obama got rid of the indexing for inflation on both of them. That is going away. It's only a 10-year sunset rule, so that's going to stop in 2020. The question is, what's it going to be at that point? We don't know. It'll start back up at 85000 Theoretically, it'll go what, 2.6% each and every year. So if you have, let's just say it goes to what the inflation rate we're presuming will be times 2.6%. That means it's gonna be you'll get it uh, eighty five thousand at two point six percent is about twenty two hundred bucks. So instead of eighty five thousand, it'll be eighty seven thousand two hundred. All right, so not a big jump, especially if your portfolio is giving you five or six percent a year deferred. You're gonna have to take more and more of that out. It's gonna be subject to more and more uh, taxation from income tax, more and more taxation from a Medicare Part B and Part D, higher tax bracket as an income tax, and on top of that, less of uh, less of a standard deduction. All right, so right here. All right, the income thresholds adjusted for inflation. The Part B was originally adjusted for inflation, but the ACA temporarily froze the thresholds like I talked about for nine years. With no indexing, more people are getting caught by it, says Kubansky. I mean, he wrote here someplace. I'm not sure. Uh, if we uh, Juliet Kubansky, director of the Medicare Policy Foundation for the uh, Kaiser Family Foundation. Maybe I'll try to reach out to her and do a podcast interview. I'd like to see what she says about that. But right there, there it is. It's on Kip. And I told you about Kiplinger's. I'm a big, big fan of Kiplinger's. You should read their stuff. All right. What year's income is used? Another thing to look at, too. The basis is two-year look behind. So if whatever your income was in 2016 is what's going to be focused on for 2018 when you file and so on and so on. So it's a basic two-year look because Social Security and the Medicare centers, centers for Medicaid, uh, Medicare CMS, Center for Medicare Services, uh, it takes a while to get you know to look at what they're going to charge you, and it's going to be based on two years previous. Uh, what if my income has gone down? And there's if you look at your Social Security statement, it'll say explicitly there's a way you can may qualify for a waiver uh, if you experience a qualifying life a changing event, uh, which is, but you have to ask those includes retirement, like we talked about in another one of my episodes here on YouTube, divorce or death. So retirement is a life changing event, but you have to ask for it. They're not going to know. Medicare is not going to know. And so let's just look at my man Kit says he has an article on this stuff as well. This is where he talks about the, uh, the I think he talks about the 500,000 uh, tier five. Uh, if you make over five, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just don't think he talked about the 100%. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was just reading this as well, but uh, there is a new top tier for Medicare Part B surcharges again the, the wealthy, and those people are making over five hundred thousand single and seven fifty married jointly. And I thought I saw in here that the actual amount of the top top would uh, be a hundred a hundred percent. He's showing eighty five percent, so maybe the new budget uh, reconciliation they just signed um, is only eighty five percent. It wasn't a hundred percent. Keep your eyes and ears peeled. I, I don't know. I could have sworn I saw it said a hundred percent though, but for the top tier, maybe not. And I, frankly, I'm not sure how many people that's going to be applicable to at the end of the day. It's just those widows right around the 85 to $105,000 threshold. They're the ones that are going to pay the 
the piper on this stuff and, and it should be avoided and you avoid it by doing some proactive tax planning while you're married. That's what you do. All right, folks, hope this helps. As always, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Love my new t-shirts, uh, fresh. And the light blue is kind of what my uh, logo colors are. Light blue and gray. I'm a big fan of them. So thumbs up for this stuff. Anything that you want me to talk about, just you know, put it in the comments below. I like receiving that stuff. Uh, don't forget to forward these videos to your friends too. Share the wealth if you will. Uh, so that way we get the word out there on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and always go to the heritagewealthplanning.com uh, website for my blog, podcasts, and other videos that we do. All right, we'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning Pocket or uh, Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. <laughs>